All right, hey guys, what's up? We're gonna go over some more EMS CEUs today. In particular, we're gonna talk about med administration. Uh, we'll go through the protocol and the things they want you to do before you give meds. And then also we'll talk uh, some in detail about different ways that we can give them, uh, different drugs that are special. Um, and talk a little bit about uh, bolusing saline and using our medication ports, go over some different things, maybe give you some tips, things that'll make it easier on you. Uh, talking about medication administration, right off the bat, the general protocol, the checklist, little five rights that you have to do. We all learned this in school. Uh, you get the right patient, right dose, right route, right time, right medication. Your five rights. If any of those is wrong, then don't give the medication. Uh, the main one that we run into uh, for us is dosing. Uh, make sure that you always verify. Uh, so if somebody tells you to give a medication or hand you a medication and you didn't draw it, make sure that you verify how much is in there. Um, and then verify that's the correct dose for that medication. Uh, also, a big one for us is we have shortages sometimes of different medications and we have to change the uh, concentration that's in the vial. So just because you normally give uh, three mils of Versed doesn't mean that it'll always be that way or three mils of whatever. It might be something different. So make sure that you verify what the concentration is in the bottle as you're drawing it and then verify if you didn't draw it, make sure that you verify what that dose actually is before you give it. Uh, we always have our phones. If you don't know a drug off the top of your head, there are some new, some drugs that are newer to us, uh, such as ketamine that some people have never given because they had, they were here for 10 or 15 years without ketamine. So if you are in that position, before you give that medication, make sure that uh, you verify what that dose is. Um, obviously safety is the big reason um, that this, uh, is so important. Um, we have two cases going on, one that just got completed and then one that's uh, in the process right now, kind of some on this topic. Okay, the, there's a nurse in Tennessee. Uh, she was just sentenced to three years of, of probation. She was found guilty of negligent homicide and gross negligent for giving, uh, for a fatal medication error. Okay, it's one of the first times the, in history that that has happened. Okay, so the uh, some things are changing in the criminal justice system. Yeah, with first responders and healthcare staff. So uh, it's even very, very important that we get these things right. The next one that's cool to look into, if you like to look into this stuff, is the Aurora Fire Rescue, the Elijah McLean case. Um, I, I reference this in the uh, patient restraint video as well. Uh, this is a good one to look into. Uh, basically, they overestimated the patient's weight. They gave a dose of ketamine that was excessive. Um, it was the max dose that was available is what they gave, but the guy only weighed like 160 pounds. Uh, and then they uh, did not take care of the patient very well. And um, he ended up passing away under their care. So they've been charged with uh, manslaughter, reckless homicide, and three counts of assault. So why the Aurora Fire Rescue is so important to us is depending on how this case turns out, this will be the first time in, you, in the United States that they have criminalized deviations from protocol okay so basically uh, if this case does go the way that it appears it's going to go and these uh, paramedics are found guilty of these charges that will set a precedent and establish case law for criminalizing deviations from protocol so you literally be criminally charged if you deviate from protocol okay so we want to make sure that we're always checking this obviously for the safety of our patients um but uh, this is becoming a bigger deal. It's happening more and more. There's a lot of other cases besides this. There's probably a dozen of them out there right now. These are the main two big ones. So if you want to look into those, check them out offline. They're uh, uh, pretty interesting. So that's, your, that's kind of your basics of giving medica medication. That's your five rides. It's really all the protocol gives you. And then it lists you a step-by-step -step, uh, guide for each type. So we're going to go through those. Uh, obviously, you have oral, you have IV, you have IM, you have IO, you have IN, the different ways we give medications. Um, we're going to talk about each of those, go through some details. I'll get set up and and uh, get some stuff set up and we'll we'll talk about it. All right, guys, so oral medications, uh, we don't have a whole lot of them here. Um, i got a couple examples that we can talk about, but I mean, the main ones we give, it'd be aspirin would be one. The other, probably the main one we give is Zofran. Right? It comes in this little tablet, these little four milligram. Uh, dissolving tablets, uh, instant glucose. That's another one, oral glucose. Uh, we have activated charcoal, um, oral medication as well, I guess, not really. But we have some different ones we give. Those are the main ones. 
Uh, the thing about the only thing really from the protocol that as far as oral medication is it, it acknowledges that oral medication is the slowest delivery medication we have and the majority of our emergency medications are not given that way for that reason um, the Zofran not really an emergency medication uh, more just to treat a symptom of other stuff but uh, the only thing with this is that this is an orally dissolving medication um, and it literally will tell you that orally disintegrating tablet on your thing so make sure that they don't swallow these, make sure they chew these up. Oral medications that we give, such as aspirin, this, glucose, they're meant to dissolve in your mouth, not meant to be swallowed. So if they swallow the medication, it'll take a long time to work. And as it dissolves going through your digestive tract, it gets absorbed that way. So not a lot of oral stuff that we do. All right guys, so the next route we're gonna go over is IVs, probably the most common way that we give medications. Also one of the most effective because it's the most directly uh, straight into the bloodstream. Uh, works the fastest. Almost all of our medications should be given that way. Uh, we don't really have any more that we can't do that anymore. We used to carry Haldol and it was a big deal if you gave it through the IV. But we don't carry Haldol anymore. So, uh, But same same thing, verify before you give any medication that the route you're going to use, IV is one that's available. We have these awesome start packs now, which make this a lot easier on us. Um, equipment wise, before we start an IV, some good practice i know we all have done this for a long time everybody here should be good at ivs it's a good time just to uh to work on one okay so let me use this little head block here but i like to set my stuff out first get it all out get it ready so i don't run out of anything okay. so i have to have a flush and i have to have a lock obviously so flush and lock. Little tip for newer medics, don't roll this all the way tight because it makes it almost impossible to get off. Okay, just start it on the threads. More than that. Just start it on the threads halfway down and this would be easy for this to get off. All right. Obviously you have a tourniquet. We're gonna place that if you haven't Learn the cool way to do this. You should have been taught this in school, but some people say they weren't. So you can pull both these up, put one under, and make this a quick pop off. So tie tying a knot. Might tie a knot if you want, but then you gotta cut it. Um, next we're gonna have to get, I like to get my tape ready. Okay, tape, it's a cool way. If you haven't seen this cool way to secure this, all right, pull your tape, take your little white, the white end off, split the tape directly down the middle, put those somewhere, get you another piece. These pieces are three to four inches long. Another piece, put it with it, your tape's ready. You all you need is this little piece of tape. Um, we have our Tegaderm. It's not actually a Tegaderm. Tegaderm is a brand, but um, our little Tegaderm with this. We always have the little uh, two by two, but you guys are all good enough. You're not gonna need that. Alcohol pad, clean the area all around, above and below where you're gonna start it. Find the IV that the uh, vein that you want. We decided that the vein that we want. So we make our selection and our size, and we're gonna use 20 today because I have one that's expired but we all know I'd use an 18 in the field 20 take it off cool tip for new people something I've found uh, these aren't made the best quality in the world they're made very cheaply so I like to spin mine left and right make sure that it's not still connected I've had that happen and then uh, pull the catheter off break it pop it away from there in case it's stuck and then put it back on make sure everything moves really quickly okay so most common reason people miss IVs, starting at a steep angle. You probably uh, were taught this in school. This is the way it's shown in the book, okay? If you, you see this 45 degree angle right here, the vein is very thin and you're gonna go through the back of it, okay? So start at the lowest angle that you possibly can. Makes this a lot easier, okay? Start the needle into the skin, okay? I go, I pop the vein, I get flash in my chamber. Once I get flash, most people will stop and try to advance the IV. The 
what has happened is the end of the needle is inside the vein, but the catheter is not, and the catheter will kink. And the majority of the time you hear somebody say, oh, I must have hit a valve. It's not that they hit a valve. It's that they didn't advance the catheter anymore. So insert the needle, get flash, then I advance approximately an eighth of an inch, and now I'm inside the vein. I've made it through the wall of the vein, of the vessel, right? So now holding this in place, I only advance the catheter into the vein. I don't pull back the needle up. I just advance the catheter until the hub makes it, and then I pull back to lock out. That'll prevent you from missing a lot of IVs. I got to include there, so I include, I remove my sharps, and I use that for my sugar. Flush, same thing. I don't need to crank this down, okay? Just until you get tension, okay? Then I can unoclude, all right? I can then uh, withdraw the vent. I draw back on the needle, or excuse me, on the syringe. See if I get blood, I should. I shouldn't get air, and then I can start to flush, all right? I'd use my whole flush and put it inside. Flush the vein to make sure it's patent. Remove this. Throw that away. You have your tegaderm. Secure the tegaderm on here. And then remove the outside white portion. While you're doing that, make sure the edges of the tegaderm are all down. That's the purpose of the tegaderm. It's not meant to hold the IV in place. You can see here, the edge of the tegaderm is right in the middle of the lock. It can't be up on this hub or you won't be able to get this connected in the hospital. Same, you don't want it below this because then this can freely move and come disconnected a lot easier. So right in the center of where the blue is, is where that tegaderm goes. This will keep it out there and secure. But this is not meant to hold the IV down. It's not its job. Its job is to make this area sterile and not let stuff come in in this area. So we have to take the IV. If you don't, you will, if you don't take the IV, you will definitely lose this IV later. So, good little trick. If you don't have a trick already, how to tape this. My first three inch tape goes right on the edge where the edge of the tegaderm is. It lines up, secures both sides, and goes down, okay? Next, tape goes upside down under your lock, and then I flip and go across the wing, other side, flip, go across the wing, and I have a U, okay? That prevents it from coming out, that holds it down. I have one more piece here, so I'm gonna take it, and I'm gonna put it on top of my first piece. So now I've secured the base with a full piece, I've got the U, and I've got the other piece. This is very strong, you can pull on this pretty hard before it'll come out really good way to secure your IV if you don't have a technique already. If you have your own technique, continue to use it. So IV pretty easy. Anytime that I do give IV medication, exact same thing before I give the medication, make sure that I verify my five rights are all good. And I've got my medication now. Okay, so I've got this medication. I see that I have nine, um, nine mils in this. So I know that whatever this is, it's the wrong dose because we don't have any medications that nine mils the correct dose, except for Atomidate, and I'm not putting this person to sleep. So it's the wrong dose. So right away I would know, okay? We'll verify the dose. Then we're gonna attach the catheter, or excuse me, attach the needle to the hub, scroll it down, draw back, make sure I get blood still, and then I can push the medication, okay? What the protocol tells you to do, do it slow, push this slowly, and it also says that if you're giving uh, anything that is mind altering, like a pain medication or a benzo, that we should immediately chase it with a flush. Um, we can even dilute the medication in the flush if we'd like. So you can get rid of two cc's, put fentanyl on here and push it so it dilutes it more. IVs, we've all started IVs and given pretty easy. All right guys, so IM medications. How do we do an IM? We can give IM two different ways. We can give it in the anterior thigh, give it in the shoulder. Two ways you must do it. Technically by protocol, you can give it in the buttocks as well, um, if you had to for some reason. I don't know anybody's ever done that. But same way, procedure-wise. Alcohol, clean the site, select the site I'm gonna give, 
Okay, medication is given with 21 or 25, between 21 and 25 gauge needles. These particular ones that we have are 23 gauge. 23 gauge, inch and a half needle. Okay. So, draw my medication, go through my five rides, verify that I'm giving the right thing. I've cleaned my sight. I wanna pull the skin taut, enter at a 90. Okay, don't do this very, very slow because it hurts really bad. Okay, pull the skin, go. We're gonna go down until I hit the hub or I get deep into the muscle. Uh, if you have something that's really skinny, you might go all the way to the bone that way. So I'm gonna go, if I feel resistance, I'm gonna stop. Once I get there, draw back, make sure that you don't get blood. I should get nothing, I should get air like a vacuum, just like that, all right? And then I'm going to administer the medication slowly. Once I'm done, I pull this off, my sharps goes to the sharps container, and I can cover it with a Band-Aid. Do I have to cover it with a Band-Aid? No, if they don't want it, but if they, it's a good idea to keep it sterile. So, I am, okay? We can give almost all of our medications IM if it, if it can be given IV, most likely it can give the IM too. Um, it is an effective way to give medications. There are a few, uh, such as Benadryl, you never wanna give IM. Solumedrol, never give IM. You can give those IM, technically, but they are extremely painful when given that way. And Benadryl can even cause nerve damage when injected into the muscles. So um, those two, particular there's probably another one out there i'm forgetting about but those two in particular uh we should never be given i am all right guys i in intranasal right with the atomizer okay so uh several medications that we can give with the atomizer we can actually give almost all the medications that we do iv um do the i in the one that we couldn't which we don't carry here is valium because it's oil based it won't absorb through your mucous membrane very well the main medications that we give IN are Versed and Narcan, okay? So the, the IN route is really what it's for is speed or the inability to get an IV, such as during a seizure or during an overdose or you have a patient that has uh, IV drug use and they don't have a lot of good veins left. Uh, the, the IN route is the one we use the most, okay? It comes in a package that has two things. It has the atomizer itself and then it has a syringe. Okay, so we take it apart and we're gonna use a blunt needle to draw our medication into the vial. For the purpose of this, I'm gonna use this flush because it's already full of saline, okay? So I draw my medication I wanna give into the vial, okay? And then I put my atomizer on, okay? This is a lot of medication to give up the nose. We don't have an exact amount. Most places do, but we don't. But kind of the general rule is anything more than four mils, it's two mils each side. Okay, more than that, and it's not gonna absorb very well, okay? So, take that off for now so I don't accidentally shoot it up my nose. But, atomizer, okay? So, got the medication in there. I insert the atomizer into my sinus. It goes inside of there. That's why it's shaped that way. And then I push and it atomizes. Same, I go half, other side, half. Okay, so if you've never seen this, See that makes a nice little fine spray, nice and slow, and your nose will absorb it really well. Narcan Versed works that's excellent this way. It's really quick to give, um, and then you can get the you can get an IV after the person has woke up, and uh, you, you're such as an overdose. They're woke up and they're breathing on their own now. You can then take time to get an IV or a seizure now that they're no longer seizing. Much easier. Okay. I in super easy. I love these things. These. Uh, is, is an absolute great tool. We don't use them as much as we should. We forget about them sometimes, but they're located. There's one of these always in the drug box. Uh, and then we have them uh, with our any place that we have medications has one of these as well. So that's it guys. Thanks for watching the video here on med administration. Uh, if you got any questions about this, anything I went over, something I messed up, uh, let me know. Give me a shout and we'll get it taken care of. Thanks for watching as always. And I'll see you guys soon.